How's it going? Chris here. Uh, I want to show you a comic book um, that I actually purchased quite a while ago, uh, intended for somebody else's uh, birthday. Uh, I'm going to be very belated by the time I send it to them. So, for this issue, uh, or for this uh, video, <laughs> I got my Superman stuff out. Um, so, as you see, I got my uh, DC 52 preview book there. I got my Kingdom Come Superman shirt. I got a uh, Superman watch that uh, was previously my mother's and probably from the 60s. Um, it doesn't work at the moment. Or, no, oh, actually it is. I wound it up. The second hand is moving at least. <laughs> but yeah, original Superman watch probably, uh, I'm guessing it's from the 60s. Um, so that would give you a hint as to what this video is. Um, I want to show you guys this. Um, this is Superman issue 161 from 1963, I think it is. And so I just wanted to give you guys a, a look on the inside of the pages. Um, I'm actually going to post this video after Chris um, uh, Dark Avenger C86 receives it. That's who this is uh, intended for. Um, been watching his reviews for quite a while now, and they've. they've you know, I've become quite fond of his videos. Um, they're quite uh, lengthy if anybody watches them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it definitely goes into depth and, and uh, just like myself or other comic book nerds, uh, we can certainly talk a lot, probably talk a little more than Todd McFarlane usually does. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's a big uh, DC fan, big Superman fan. Um, so his birthday was quite a while ago. I ended up ordering this for him, found something on the net, and um, got this for him and uh, of course I gave it a read so <laughs> uh, if I'm going to get a Silver Age Superman you know, I might as well read it before I send it off uh, I don't have any Supermans in my collection uh, I used to have some Superboys actually way back when in the 90's um, so yeah this video is going to be posted after he actually receives this comic I'm going to show you some of the pages uh, talk about it a little bit but as far as a review of uh, this older comic book, um, I'll leave that up to Chris to do a review of this book if he wishes to. So, um, yeah, let's have some fun with this. Um, hope you guys enjoy me presenting this to you. Um, a Superman um, comic book that's not going to be in my collection for very long. Um, but it was actually quite a fun little um, read to look through. So, let's open this comic book up and uh, show you guys. Okay, so before I open this up for you guys, just a note that the um, seller on eBay has uh, graded this in a um, uh, very, a very, uh, yeah, very good to fine condition. Um, I probably agree with that. Um, it's it's pretty close to that. So uh, front cover is pretty good, though. I mean, held on pretty pretty well. Uh, a little bit of a faded white, a uh, little bit dirty, but not too bad. Um, really nothing wrong with this comic book, um, except for one thing that wasn't mentioned in the ad, but still is allowed within the very good to fine grade, which would be right here. There's somebody's name written in the comic book, and that is... Danny Coolin Holter. So Danny, shame on you for writing in the comic book. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a little bit of tanned pages, but I mean, um, the actual pages are actually held together really good. No chipping or uh, really anything like that. Um, I mean, on the cover there is some chipping. It's a little more brittle and and that, but comic book is pretty good. Um, so why I got this one for Chris again? big Superman fan um, and uh, this one mainly because of the uh, subtitle here extra the last days of mom and Paul can't so I thought this might be a little bit of a kind of Silver Age sig significance um, you know for Superman and, and uh, his fans uh, maybe maybe not um, but uh, this I'll tell you guys just the stories 
first story is actually the the death of Ma and Pa Kent, um, which was I don't know kind of interesting. Again, um, a lot of mixed and different kind of uh, histories with Superman. Um, but uh, so basically, with this one, he gets his parents end up getting a disease. He tries to put him in the um, Phantom Zone. Um, and he kind of blames himself for what happens with this little adventure he has with, um, him and his parents. He thinks it's his fault. Um, in the end, it's really not his, uh, his fault. Um, but yeah, actually his, uh, mom and pa can't die in this little story. Um, and yeah, again, just a reminder, this, this, uh, comic book is from, uh, 1963, so... It's pretty cool and pretty good condition, I think, for a 63 comic book. So I'll just give you kind of a flip through. And, um, yeah. So basically it's a time travel uh, thing with uh, his parents. And uh, they end up getting a disease and they run across some pirates. And uh, so basically something in the present day, though, that they find... Um, that was left there by these pirates in the past uh, is actually what caused um, the illness to his parents. So, and this one was not too bad of a story, but uh, it, it's definitely, you know, the older 60s, um, you know, silly time travel um, stuff. But I, it's kind of neat. It almost looks, you know, the Silver Age oversized and the panel's not coming all the way up to the top. I mean, you got a good inch or so at the top there. Um, and kind of is more like a newspaper strip in a sense. Um, just leaving those bigger bars at the top. Yeah. So there's basically the same page right there that is... Uh, um, the front page. And this comic book does have two... two stories. Uh, 204, Evolutionary War Soldiers, only $1.98. Gotta love some of the old ads, too, eh? Got Metropolis Mailbag. It's kinda neat just really see what was in the comic books in, you know, in, in the 60s. Is is pretty neat. I mean, looking through just the ads themselves are pretty cool. So, staples are pretty tight. Again, pages are a little bit, um, you know, tanned, but inside pages, I mean, if you're... I mean, I don't think the camera is doing it really any good, any justice, but yeah, all inside pages are really good, like I say, except for the um, chipping on the front and that, and the writing on the inside. Okay, and so here we have the second story, um, and it's called Superman, Superman Goes to War. Uh, this one, to me, wasn't as good of a, a story. Um, the Mom and Pa Kent death was a little better, but um, still kind of a 60s corny kind of thing going in. Uh, but anyway, so a, a few of the Daily Planet... Um, uh, employees get caught up into doing this little bit of a movie shoot, this war movie shoot. Uh, they go to this island and supposedly they're being attacked by older, um, or uh, kind of some lost Japanese soldiers. Uh, but that turns out not to be the case. Um, and uh, Clark Kent has to go through a series of little, you know, um, little lies and, and uh, why not to try to hide himself. Um, from being Superman, uh, but still being able to help, um, <laughs> and stuff like that. So this one didn't capture me as much. Um, I actually had to look uh, back through it and read it a little bit before I told you guys about it. Um, and, of course, you get here a little cameo by Supergirl as well. Um, so it's kind of neat to see Clark in this war setting, but um, it was just a bunch of the daily planet people trying to uh, help out this fella doing some war scenes for a movie um, and they start getting attacked by these uh, supposedly uh, Japanese soldiers uh, so it's kind of neat to see there just a 
Clark you know, sort of in his combat uniform there lifting a tank. That was kind of neat. Uh, but it ends up turning out to be some other um, um, aliens actually which uh, breathed um, chlorine and they were on a little space adventure, got hit by a meteor, uh, crash landed on Earth and um, there were some old abandoned actually uh, Japanese military units uh, left on this uh, island so they thought they were being attacked when they started reenacting these war scenes so they tried to fight back <laughs> Um, so and eventually, of course, so here's the whole explanation of, of uh, their little story. But, of course, Superman eventually helps them, and they're off their way, and he saves the day for everybody. So this story was a little bit, um, I don't know, not as good for me. The first one's a little bit better, but um, I really want to see uh, Chris's review of this book. Um, just to see how a good, or an old Silver Age... Superman reads for a Superman fan. Uh, really want to hear that. Um, these were just my initial thoughts on the story. Um, again, really kind of cool just to go through and look at uh, some of these old um, 60s ads as well. That's just really kind of neat. Um, so yeah, this uh, again, this issue is a uh, belated, very belated uh, birthday present for uh, Dark Avenger C86, um, and a little bit of a rip down there too, but not too bad for the price I paid for it too, so I hope uh, you enjoy the issue, Chris, um, and as soon as I know he's got a video uploaded where he shows the issue, I will put a link here as well, so uh, yeah, I'll probably put a link actually right there on Superman, so if you want to go and see his video and his review um, if he does one for this book, just click on his name there and uh, go check out the video. So, happy very belated birthday, Chris, <laughs> and we'll see you all guys later. Bye.